Is Notre Dame and Navy the biggest playoff game of the weekend? Get ready for the three-point stance. Three different minds, three different opinions, three dudes talking ball. It's Kenton, it's Jay, it's Zach. Time to bring the heat, boys. Yes, it's the three-point stance. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Kenton Gibbs, Jay Smith. I'm Zach Blackerby. We're talking about the biggest games of the weekend, as well as some tonight that I think are a little intriguing, a little interesting. But let's start things off with Notre Dame and Navy. Kenton, is this the biggest play-in game when you talk about the ramifications of the 12-team college football playoff? Is this the biggest game this weekend? By a mile. By a mile. Nobody's even close. And let me tell you why. Notre Dame only has one path to make it, right? If you're watching the end game and you see when uh, when Dr. Strange looks over at Tony and he throws up that one, right? It's not, he's not in the hood about to take a pick. That means there's one way that they can get this thing done. And with that being said, I see the same path to Notre Dame. We all thought Notre Dame had to beat Louisville because that was their last chance to get a quality win. Not only that, you thought to yourself, if Notre Dame has two losses with this schedule, there's no way they get ranked as one of the top 12 in the nation. Well, here we go. One of those things is still true. This is no longer, that Louisville game is no longer their last chance at a big win. However, sure. however, it is still true that if they have two losses, even if that loss is to a Navy team that potentially runs the table and goes, you know, 14-0 and 0 and is a top 15-ish team in the nation, you still will not get into the playoff. That's just a fact. And then on the Navy side of things, you have to be not only a group of five champion, you have to be the what? The highest rated group of five champion. Mm -hmm. So everybody loves Genty and what he's doing. Plus, Boise State is Boise State. While we like to pretend like there isn't a delineation and there isn't a brand thing right. going on, Boise State is one of the biggest brands in the G5. If you want to beat out Boise State, you have to leave no doubt. You have to make it clear, hey, I get it, we're a service academy, but then we're here to serve y'all up with this triple option and get ourselves some wins <laughs> here as well. So Navy has to win out as well, I feel like, to get into the playoff. I'm seeing this as a game that this is a de facto elimination game. I am guaranteeing you right here, right now, it's a level 18 lock from three-point stands that if you see a loser of this game get into the playoff, I will eat a well-done steak. I'll be chewing for three days straight to eat that steak, but I'll do it anyway because I'm telling you the loser of this game is out. They're out. No way in. I don't think that's as strong as a bet as you think it is, but that, that, that's fine, Ken. I, I, mean, I, I get I get what we'll you're take, saying. We'll, 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 it's, it's not it, something ridiculous that won't actually happen, though, so that's a bet that I will gladly well, take. Course, it's something I'm, that you I'm not doing it after no 3 two, one I'm not doing nothing crazy after him. I'm not, hey, he got all the crazy bets. I, I ain't doing that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Every single yeah. one of them that's going for engagement farming on that has definitely got it. I'm not touching it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you are wearing, uh, you know, Texas T-shirts left and right. But mm -hmm. when you talk about Notre Dame and Navy, Notre Dame's a two-touchdown favorite, according to our friends at FanDuel. And, Jay, they should be. They should be two-touchdown favorites. They're Notre Dame. Exactly. And the way that they've been playing over the last few games, I mean, when you look at it, after the Northern Illinois debacle, 66-7 over Purdue, 28-3 over Miami, Ohio, 31-24, close game against Louisville, in which, as Kenton said, that was a, ne a necessary game for them to even be considered for anything going forward. Stanford, 49-7, and then they just gave it to Georgia Tech, 31-13. So Notre Dame has been playing some really good football over the last, what's this, five weeks. They look like the Notre Dame team that we expected to actually blow out Northern Illinois. I guess that Northern Illinois conversation that the coaches had where Marcus Freeman was taught a couple things or two, he actually was able to apply it and now move forward. Now, this game is going to be interesting. You got Blake Horvath, who people are trying are saying that he should deserve to be in the Heisman conversation. He doesn't have the numbers, but he has thrown for like over 800 yards and rushed for like 600 yards. So he's like, and he's got 20 touchdowns total. So we it's going to be an interesting battle in this one because I'm curious to see if Notre Dame is disciplined enough to stop that triple option. Go ahead, Kenton. Go ahead. 
double did y'all Notre Dame should be not only double digit but two touchdown favorites. Are we okay? Is everybody well here? What what are we? I'm sorry. I don't see a world where Notre Dame should be 14 point favorites over this team because the how many how many teams with a post and their starting quarterback has Notre Dame absolutely laid it on them thick this season? You look at Georgia Tech. Pyron was their starting quarterback, not Haynes King. You get what you get there. Stanford is Stanford. Come on now. We, we're not talking really about smart, it. really smart, though. They're so we're, smart. We're They're not talking smart. about a country club sport. We're not talking about building robotics here. Stanford is Stanford. Let's move Woo! right along there. They might have robots on the field. Oh, that knock it off. We ain't got the Tesla bots on the field yet. You know, yes. we ain't been replaced by them yet. And then you go forward to uh, the Louisville game. That game was very close. I could see a world, don't get me wrong, I can see a world where Notre Dame wins it. I'm not saying I've got I've got uh Navy winning outright. Let me make that clear right now. I you have a world. winning outright? Yes, yeah. I think the wrong team's favored here. I think the wrong team is favored. I the wrong think team's favored by 14 points. They're 14 points off. They are I think that Vegas is at least 15 and a half off. I think that I think that Navy wins this game. And here's the thing. I was a big believer in Riley Leonard. I was a huge believer in Riley Leonard. Sure. Wow. Riley Leonard showed me real early, uh, I am not who you thought I was, brother. This is not what you thought it was. And the Notre Dame offensive line as well has proven themselves to not be the vaunted offensive lines of the past where they just maul people, where it's just like, hey, yeah. you know, <laughs> your only hope is that their receivers can't get any separation and you can do something there. I think the Navy wins this game. I think this 14-point line is a rat line from hell. I think anybody who want to make some money this weekend, go ahead and put something on it. Put some yeah. on Navy because I'm telling you, there is no way that Notre Dame wins this by 14. You really want to get risky? Put some on that money line. Put some on that money line, baby. Listen, I see Jay Smith. He telling you he on the booty call line, also known as the uh, the Kyle McCord line, based on what he did with the with with his uh, performance against Pitt last night. Who could have predicted wow. that? But but who could have? Who could have? Who could have? I'm telling you right now. Give me Navy to cover. Give me Navy to win. All right, I'm, I'm picking Notre Dame. Jay, where are you in this one? Who are you picking? I'm with Notre quick? Dame as well. No, I'm not going to Notre Dame. Navy. Okay. Now, as, as good as Navy's triple option is, I think Notre Dame has built themselves to be a lot more disciplined over the last few weeks. I think they'll be prepared for it. It's going to be a fun game, though. I'll say that. Yeah, sure. LSU... Texas A&M, we talked about this one earlier in the week about the ramifications of the SEC, especially if Texas A&M wins this and they stay undefeated in the conference. What a surprise that that would be. I mean, you can make an argument that it's a similar argument that you just said, Kenton, for, for Notre Dame and Navy. I mean, whoever wins between LSU and Texas A&M, they've got a real shot not only to play for the SEC championship in Atlanta, but also to be one of those 12 teams playing in the postseason. Well, the reason that I say that Notre Dame and Navy have the highest, that one matters the most, both of these teams still have a path even if they lose this game. And yep. it's it's not it's not a huge path, don't get me wrong, but there is a path for both of these teams. Yep. Notre Dame and Navy, there's no way. Now, with that being said, LSU and Texas A&M is going to be the one with all the eyes on it. It's going to be the one that ESPN is pushing. It's going to be the one that, hey, we sure. are here. I believe College Game Day is, is there as well, correct? Am I am I correct there? Or? I, I think, think you're that's correct, correct on that assessment. Yes. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a huge game, and rightfully so. I have to give Brian Kelly his respect. He has won big games this year. I got to give him his respect. I got to give him his respect. However, this is going to be another test for that LSU team. And then on the Texas A&M side, Elko has that team rolling. They are absolutely rolling right now. But you still got Texas at the end of the year. So even if you lose this game, you have a shot to make it up. And, hell, if you win this game going forward, I think you might have locked yourself up a playoff spot because nobody expects you to beat Texas. But you're going to end up in that top 8 to 10 range, and you're not going to drop too far from a loss to what is likely either your eventual SEC champion or SEC runner-up. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting because if, if they do lose to Texas in the last week of the season – they don't go to Atlanta to play for a championship, which they may lose. I think that's the situation with them losing to Texas. If assuming they it beat LSU, yeah. I think it saves them. Yeah, which yeah. is interesting. I think it's interesting. Yeah, because hey, Jay, who wins this game? To me, I'm I'm ooh man, it's a tough one. I spread wise, where it's ooh. Ugh. 
A&M's only a one-point favorite. Quit stalling. Pick pick who wins. <laughs> I hate having to make this joke. Give me A&M. I think that they win this one at the crib just because they're at home. I give them a field goal win on this one. All right. I'm taking LSU. Kenton, real quick, who you got? Elko is an Aggie man in Aggie land, but Brian Kelly's going to get it done. LSU wins a close one. All right. There we go. There we go. What's going on in the Big Ten? And can Vandy upset Texas? That's coming up next on the three-point stance. Well, folks, you know, my co-host might be a little drunk based on some of those predictions they were making. They, they may be a Come little off-day rocker. But, 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 you know what I know they took? Because they, they seem to be clear enough. They all seem to be clear enough. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking, which clearly my co-hosts have had here. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. When you drink alcohol, it gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's the byproduct, not the dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make pre Z-biotics, rather, your first drink of the night. And drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Trust me, every time I have free alcohol before drinks, I notice a different feeling the next day, okay? I act the Julio off the Julio, but I'm all right. Because even after a night out, I'm confident that I can plan on Z-Biotics being there for me so I can go to run club, I can go to work, I can go to wherever I go without a worry. Step one, drink free alcohol. Step two, drink responsibly. Step three, enjoy tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on college at checkout. Prize picks is the most fun that I've had jumping into daily fantasy sports this season. You can get into that action in over 30 states, including California, Oklahoma, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. And so you can go in there, you can play along celebrities like Drewski, Joe Button, you know, NBA champion Sean O'Malley. You can find all kinds of community picks under the promo tab and in the app with entries with all the biggest names and celebrities. And so you can sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. Don't even need to win the $50 bonus. The bonus is guaranteed. So when I looked at my roster, you got Joe Mixon with more or less at 78 and a half rushing yards. Lamar Jackson, 208 and a half passing yards. Going more there. Derrick Henry, I'm actually picking him to go less than 97 and a half rushing yards just because it's kind of a weird game this weekend against Cleveland. Brees Hall with less than 76 and a half yards because the Jets are not that good. So you can check them out. Download the app today and use the code Locked On College to get $50 instantly after you play your first five-dollar lineup. Prize picks, run your game. Thank you so much for making the three-point stance your first listen every single day. Before we get into tonight's games, because I do think there are two interesting ones worth discussing, um, Illinois heads to Oregon and really? what is what is a classic, a classic ranked Big Ten matchup. I'm joking. It feels weird, but you look at it, it's like, this seems like it's a big game, but when you look at it, like, I, I just don't think there's any way Illinois wins this game. Oregon's a 20-point favorite. I think that feels about right. I know we talked yesterday, Kenton, about how 20 points is too much in a conference game. I just, I don't feel like it is in this case. I think Oregon's rolling. Illinois does believe in itself, but going on the road, I, I just don't see this one really happening. You know, I'm just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. No, but seriously, I'm not going to stop believing in this Illinois team. I think the fight, fighting Brett Bielema must have enough to cover. I don't think they have enough to win. I think okay. they have enough to cover that three touchdown because of how they play football in terms of a very, very, very swarming defense and defensive backfield that has not allowed the big play constantly. I think that's something that needs to be lauded about this Illinois team and why I think they'll lose this game, but I think they lose by about – 14, maybe 17, just <laughs> enough to backdoor their way into covering this thing. Because, again, they have what it takes defensively to stay in this game. Offensively, just don't turn the ball over. Don't hurt yourselves. Use that vaunted running game. 
kind of make this game shorter. Obviously, they're going to win, not to cover. Obviously, I'm talking as a Vegas guy here, like saying, hey, this is what you need to do to make the money. But the reality is I don't think that uh, Illinois will be turnover prone. I don't think that they'll be absolutely stifled on offense to a point where it's like, hey, Oregon's going to whoop the wheels off these guys, and they have no shot at even sniffing that line. I think they'll be just fine with that 20-point line, but I don't think they win all right. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Jay, anything anything else on that? Yeah, you know, as a longstanding member of the SEC, it's always great to see these really old school Big Ten battles, right? And now we've even gotten it with rankings. Makes it even better. It feels like the years of the Big Ten West versus the Big Ten East or two Big Ten West teams just battling it out. It feels good to see these games showing up like this. Uh, So those old school Big Ten games are fun. But no, it's very odd seeing Illinois have to travel all the way over to the West Coast to play this game. And it's funny because we were all kind of, you know, out on Oregon after the first two games. You know, Idaho 24-14, Boise State 37-34. And even though Boise State does get respect from the fans out there because of what they've done, We were kind of questioning what Oregon did. Now Oregon has just been rolling off W after W, and it's been getting bigger and bigger with how wide their wins have been. I think Illinois goes in there and gives them a challenge, especially after that 21-7 drubbing of Michigan. Granted, Michigan isn't the Michigan of old that we expected, but they played some really – heck, they played Penn State pretty tough, and they've got a solid secondary. So now Dylan Gabriel's got to figure out how to throw this ball on this Illinois secondary, which is, you know, where we're going to have questions. But it's fascinating to see that we've got a ranked game out of Illinois. Shout out to them. Good for for them. them. They need that in their lives. Yeah. All right, so we're all on the same page uh, on that one. Texas versus Vandy. We've got a ranked game not only out of Illinois – but a ranked game out of Vandy. And I, I'm seeing some chatter of folks buying into, okay, Vandy can upset their second top five team of the season. I, I do think they keep it close for a minute. I don't know if they win it. In fact, I, I definitely will pick Jay's Texas Longhorns on this. But what are the chances? Jay, you look, know this look, team. Look, 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 what, what look. I don't know this team. Off? This is not I, the, the level of disrespect that I've been receiving out of you two is just preposterous. As a long time member of the SEC, there's only one UT in that conference, and it's Tennessee. But besides that, this game is going to be intriguing because the question is going to be can Diego Pavia pull off the same thing he did against Alabama? which is keep the ball for 40 minutes in a game and prevent that Texas explosive offense from actually being able to produce. Vanderbilt's defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. We saw them stifle up Alabama, uh, and from there, they just took their time in playing the game. They made it to where they ate up all that clock. Even as an 18-and-a-half-point dog, they can pull something out. It's all going to be on Diego comfortable they play as well as forcing turnovers because it seemed like Quinn Ewers was a little been a little rattled the last few weeks yeah it didn't, didn't look a little right if they get out there and they get to hitting them boys you know the SEC power that they have there's a chance they could pull a uh, upset again out there next they, they're putting up nets so they're protecting the field from the from the debris of Texas fans so that, that real? should be good to go. No, it's not real, but it would okay. be fantastic if they did just as a troll. See, but, I didn't think it was real. Like, put, I totally put, those put those baseball nets up. Put those baseball nets over there where the Texas fans are so they can protect it from plays being changed just because they're throwing water bottles on the field. Mm-hmm. But I think Vanderbilt has a chance in this game. They'll cover. I don't know if they can win, but they'll definitely cover. Okay. They're not winning. They're not covering. Uh-huh. Nashville. Is going to be renamed uh, something that rhymes with Nash that uh, is is not as as uh, available for us to say on this show without some editing. I will say this: um, this is going to get ugly. You know, you talk about them upsetting Bama. You know why they were upset, able to upset Bama? Bama right now is not a team that's very good at chopping wood and carrying water. They're not good at doing the little things that it takes to win football games. They're not good at, hey, you have a lead. Can you run the ball to put this game away? They're not good at, hey, it's third and one, fourth and one. We need a touch, but we need a yard to go ahead and make this happen. You know who is a lot better at that than them? You know who's a lot better at that than them? Jay Smith's Texas Longhorns. I'm telling you something right now. I know 
that Jay is getting disappointed at us even having this conversation because he knows his boys out of UTA. He knows his boys out of Austin, Texas are something special in this regard. I don't think that UT. Vandy has a shot. UT. UT, UT Tennessee. Yes. UT, UT oh, wow. Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. All right, real I'm quick, sorry. guys. Uh, Bama, Bama, Missouri. Um, Missouri's backup quarterback is expected to, to be playing here. Uh, Alabama, 17-point favorite. Who you got in this one? Uh, just real quick, uh, Jay. Oh, Bama. Bama. Bama's going to blow them out. Okay. Getting. Coach, Coach Drink going to need to drink and some Z-Biotics. Uh, this is going to get ugly. There Bama rolls. Yep. Use promo code uh, Locked On College there for sure. All right. So there's some interesting games tonight. And I actually think this is a big reason why um, a running back may not win the Heisman this year. Let's jump into that in just a moment. Three point stance. All right, today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Let's, uh, let's pick a few lines for the games that we didn't talk about today. Nebraska at number four, Ohio State. Ohio State, a 25 and a half point favorite. Kenton, where are you going? Oh, Nebraska don't got a post. That's a big line. I don't trust Ryan Day. I think that the, the Corn Huskers found a way to backdoor that line. Give me All the right. Huskers backdoor it. Jay? Ohio State. Ohio State freshman quarterback, he's going to have problems throwing against this uh, experienced defense. Yep, I think I'm there with you. TCU hosting Texas Tech, a little Big 12 action. TCU a six-and-a-half-point favorite. I really like the Horned Frogs in this one. Ooh, me too. Give me the same one. Give me them Horned Frogs. Okay. Hey, guns up. Give the Raiders, baby. There it is. There it is. All right, last one. Michigan at uh, – or excuse me, Michigan State at Michigan – uh, Michigan just a five point favorite at home. Give me the Wolverines to cover here. Same. There's no reason for Michigan to be a favorite in this game. Michigan has been awful, even though Michigan State's not that much better. Michigan doesn't have a quarterback. Give me, mm-hmm. give, yeah, no. Okay. So you want the Spartans here? That's that's what I'm hearing. Oh, Michigan. Give me Michigan. Oh, okay. Because I think the run through a brothers. Favorite. I think the run through a brothers' face offense is enough. I don't care if you don't have a quarterback when you've got Mullins. When you got uh, the the Donnie Edwards who was on the cover, that's all you need. They're gonna be all right. Give me Michigan to cover. Yeah, I'm I'm there with you. I'm there with you. Hey, right now at FanDuel, you can bet uh, five dollars and get two hundred dollars bonus bets guaranteed. Come on, that's all at FanDuel.com. Final few moments of today's edition of the Three Point Stance, guys. This is the stuff that bothers me, and we talked about this a little bit. When we uh, when we've had our Heisman conversations about Ash and Genty, the the Boise State running back, people have to watch your games, and they've got to be in these prime time elements to where it, it it the the attention swells on social media. I mean, a lot yes. of this is popularity contest. Sadly, it shouldn't be that. We all agree that it should not it be that, but it is. It is, and so you know, it's the quarterbacks that get the face time, and sometimes running backs get it. But Boise State playing UNLV at 9.30 Central Time on a Friday night does not help him. It does not, not help really. him at all. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. But it's it's, it's reasons like this where he's not going to win the Heisman when it's all said and done. Yeah, and this is the up. one thing that hurts. This hurts the, the Gen T train of Heisman-ness because – Who's going to stay up for this game? Now, granted, I probably will because I'm a degenerate. And that's what we I'm do. But at the same say, time, I'm a sicko. if, I'm a if I plan on tailgating in the morning and being up down there in Oxford, I'm probably going to need to get some sort of sleep or at least pretend to give me some Z-biotics in order to survive. There it is. I'm not going to get much sleep. But at the same time, that's actually a good game. UNLV is 6-1. and one. That go-go offense that Brendan Marion brought there has been like taking college yeah. football by storm. People love seeing that that up-tempo, gimmicky-type plays because it's it's fun football. And then you got Genty trying to run it down the man's throat. That's old-school football smash mouth. What we it's miss. Fun. It's sure. fun. It's fun watching somebody get ran through, right? Marshawn Lynn says it over and over and over and over mm-hmm. and over and over and over again. Yeah. We, we get enjoy it, that. We get it. I want, <laughs> I want to watch that game at 7.30. I don't care if you're in the Pacific time. Put them boys at 5.30 Pacific time because it's it better Saturday. for the rest I'll, of us. I also want it on Saturday when everybody's watching football. I, I don't know. Friday night college football is like a lot of times just seems unserious to me. 
It's not. Does, it's not does fair. Does the Mountain West, do they not have the ability to flex games like other conferences do? Because I know other conferences, they can look up and be like, hey, we want to move this game here. We want to move. We want to set this game start time. Yeah. For this well, why of this. would you want the face of your conference playing on a Friday night? It just doesn't make sense to me. Saturday yeah, it would be perfect afternoon. It it makes about as much sense as Jay said. He's going to be in Oxford instead of Nashville this upcoming Saturday. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought Kitten was going to yell at me for that take. I'm glad we're. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I didn't get that on a, no, on no, a no. Friday. I, I thought it was in the great. Listen, I'm with you. I want to see good ball within reasonable time. I know I am a single. Unmarried child, by the way, extra single if somebody whatever. And that's it, you know, that. Anyway, I know that I am a single, unmarried child. This man, I, I, I know that like I can stay up late and all that. That may not be the case for y'all. I know Zach, you've got a family. Jay is married to the Texas Longhorns. I understand that like we we all don't have the same life situations. So I don't want a situation where you got to stay up late and potentially miss Aston Genty because that man is going to be playing at one a.m. And you got to sit there locked in. Like, Honey, go to sleep. You make the bottles for the baby. I'm watching the game. Nobody wants to do that. That's not fair yeah, to him. Is... That's not fair right, to college hey, football. Let, let, let's touch on that. Let's touch on the other two games tonight, just because they actually kind of do matter. Louisville at Boston College. Ken, this is your world, the ACC. Who is this Louisville team? Who is this Boston College team? Louisville's got to play Clemson next week. Like this, this, I think this matters. And I think Louisville overlooks BC. I love Thomas Cassianos. While I don't believe in Bill O'Brien at any level at, sure, all, yeah. at all, I think that Tommy C is enough for them to get a win here. I think it's close. I think Louisville kind of sleepwalks and overlooks them, and they come out with this win. But if Louisville plays their best football, Boston College doesn't stand a chance. But I just have a strange feeling they're going to overlook them and come out with an L. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, me too. Yeah. Okay, good. Jay, Rutgers at USC. Where are you at with this one, this USC team? Um, keeps uh, getting in its own way to to some extent. Um, they do, but where where, it, where are you where are you with this one? A classic big uh, classic Big Ten matchup between Rutgers. Another and classic Big Ten Big Ten game where the one of the oppositions it's at ten o'clock Eastern time, which is natural for them because it feels like ten o'clock at night, and they're playing on the other side of the country. And, like, legitimately playing at 10 o'clock at night. So, I don't know if Rutgers is going to be physically available for this game. Their bodies are going to just probably start big, to slow. Yeah, this is a big ass. That's a massive ass. 10 o'clock at night is kickoff? That is, whew. That's tough for anybody. I don't care how old you are. I mean, usually I'm usually hitting the club at that point when I was back at that age. But well, not when I've been training all day. Rutgers time, right? Right. That is bananas to be able to. No, I. I think that USC should be able to now. Greg Schiano has got these boys playing some physical football. They've been playing really good. I mean, they're four and three, and this is not something that any of us expected out of Rutgers. Schiano likes to run it down your throat, too. So run games do travel, and so do defenses. If their mm -hmm. defense shows up, they could pull this upset. Somebody has to win this game. We're looking at two teams on massive losing streaks. Somebody has to win. Sure. And I'll tell you who wins. It's the team that's staying their tail at home. It's the team that's not saying, wait a minute, are we supposed to be up playing football right now? It's going to be that team. USC has more talent than Rutgers. Rutgers is more physical in run games and defenses do travel. However, there is such a great discrepancy in talent. I don't think USC could flub this one up unless they're trying to get Lincoln Riley fired. Unless he just is looking toward that buyout and he want to go golfing already, there's no way USC loses this game. And I think this is one of the bigger lines that gets covered in the interconference game. I think the USC actually covers that 13 and a half. All right. There we go. There we go. Have a great weekend of watching college football, both the UGENTS as well as everyone listening or watching right now. Thank you for making the Three Point Stance your first listen every single day. For your second listen, go check out our buddy Spencer McLaughlin, now host of Locked On College Football with Spencer McLaughlin. Good for him. Little title change. Good for him. Good for him. It's on the same YouTube channel or audio feed. For Kenton Gibbs and Jay Smith, I'm Zach Blackerby. This has been the Three Point Stance. Get your Z-Biotic, y'all. Stay sober.